Meet Anna. She's 19. She lives in a suburb of a big city with her mother and two younger siblings. They have a small apartment. Two of her friends were recently harassed by a group of young men of North African descent. The cousin of one of her friends has since warned her that migrants will take over the suburb, the city and soon the entire country. The cousin says girls and women should be extra careful. He also tells Hannah that he and his friends are forming a network to protect the country against migrants. This network has links with other like-minded networks throughout Europe and with a network in the United States. Hannah has met some of the cousin's friends and thinks one of them is cute. He invited her to a three-day summer festival. Hannah tells her mother about her fear of being harassed and how she feels safer now she is friends with a group trying to stop migrants from taking over the country. She's looking forward to the festival. Her mother is worried that her daughter is on a way of joining a far-right extremist movement but does not know what to do. She calls the community police for assistance. We asked RAN practitioners to share their opinions about the case of Hannah. I think the community police could help the mother with, with finding other contacts, other institutions which maybe know um, strategies or ways or have programs for individuals like that or even for parents which are concerned so that she kind of is linked to institutions which um, have more specific knowledge on the case. Alors, avant de conseiller quelque chose à la mère, euh, j'essaierai de lui faire comprendre euh, euh, d'abord comment se forme un groupe radicalisant. Ce qui est important dans le cas de Anna, c'est que le père n'est pas présent. The violent far right extremism has at this time three main targets foreigners, xenophobia, Muslims and Jews. Well potentially only one of the target well they will target only one of the three, but potentially the three. And I would add to some extent what we call the system. So they will, they will be anti-system, anti-state, anti-government, anti-institutions, everything. Definitely the um, hatred towards migrants is something that is one of the, uh, one of the pillars of the uh, far-right uh, extremist narratives. Donc ces groupes radicalisants, la première chose qu'ils disent pour qu'on les rejoigne, c'est on est en danger. On est en danger euh, maintenant. The first assessment probably to do with, uh, in Anna's case, would be to check how anchored she is with this far-right extremist ideology or if it is just a very superficial engagement because just because she is afraid by while well, this colored people living in our neighborhood because of this fear and because of the stories of uh, uh, harassment that she heard from uh, her friends uh, maybe she just looks for a, well, a way to reassure herself In the network I am active at, which is called Mosaic, um, it's, it's in Hamburg, and we work um, to build projects or environments for individuals to exchange ideas, to talk about um, certain topics that are important to them in their lives, also about politics, also about society, and also to create safer spaces for them to talk about experiences that they have. And, um, and this really helps to uh, build critical thinking skills. Well, we share our stories. We share our stories as somebody of the oppressed group. Um, and uh, through our stories, youngsters many times under understand that, uh, that, it is not, that it is easy to hate, uh, but it requires a lot of effort to really understand. And we offer them that time that can spend with us to learn through our stories how painful it can be if somebody just hates us because of the belonging to the group that is being hated. Um, and we try to really work on those fears. I think that emotions and, and fears are part of that. 
and uh, we try to comfort uh, those youngsters by really to just talking. Uh, so if they have a fear about uh, migration, but they have never met any migrant, um, for them it is pretty shocking if they meet somebody and finally realize that those people can be just um, really normal part of the society um, and, and, and should be there. And they can also ask questions, they can uh, just face their fears. So living libraries and, and storytelling is definitely one of the core that we, work, that we use in our work. I would invite Anna to the Mosaic project, of course, and, um, and give her the feeling that, she's, that, that her voice is very important. And not only give her the feeling, also <laughs> give her the platform to voice her opinion and to kind of to get engaged in, in, in a movement or in some action that she really wants to see in her society. Uh, if we give them the opportunity to express themselves uh, and if we give them the alternative uh, towards extremists, um, so somewhere where they can be useful, because I believe that everybody, especially youngsters, they want to feel that they are useful for the society, so we should give them the opportunity to be useful. Otherwise, somebody else will take them. The belief that one's in-group is the victim of a conspiracy of out-groups is one of the foundations of every extremist ideology. The subsequent victimhood narrative, we are under attack, you need help, forms a key component of extremist propaganda and recruiting efforts. To promote alternative narratives and counter-narratives and protect vulnerable youth, it is important for practitioners to foster critical thinking and media literacy. This also means identifying, drawing attention to and raising awareness of propaganda and manipulation effects.